This video is brought to you by Squarespace, an incredible platform to build a stunning web presence for your business, but more on that later. Does your MacBook already look like this? Does your battery already have 80% health after a couple months? You may not realize, but every day you're making a ton of small mistakes that damage your Mac. So let's talk about the sneaky culprits and how to fix them. The first mistake people make is picking a color. I know, I know this won't directly damage your laptop, but it can have negative consequences. While a darker color like space gray or midnight may seem like a stylish choice, it can lead to regrets down the road. The darker colors make scratches and marks more noticeable, which can make it less pleasant to use your device or harder to sell. So if you want to avoid this mistake, it's important to think about how you plan to use your MacBook and whether a lighter color like silver or starlight might be a better choice. These colors are less likely to show scratches and marks as easily, and they will help your MacBook maintain that like new look for longer. Otherwise, get a proper case, but not plastic. Plastic will leave scratches as well. I've been there. Don't buy plastic. Just don't. <laughs> now let me do a bit of guessing. I know you're eating in front of your computer. Don't tell me that you don't. It's a very popular habit and despite sounding quite harmless, it can lead to a sticky and dirty keyboard, not to mention the potential for liquid damage. Now you may say, Arthur, I will just install a cheap silicone keyboard protector and it will continue eating in front of my MacBook. Yes, you can do that, but that piece of silicone can actually cause more damage than having no protection at all. Yes, these silicone protectors will prevent dust and crumbs from finding their way onto the keyboard, but they also can cause excessive moisture to accumulate. As you run intensive tasks, the air between the laptop and the silicone will start heating up and condensing. The tiny water droplets can then slip under keys and corrode the contacts. Plus, silicone is a very delicate material. If the silicone mixture is wrong, it can start degrading over time, leaving a nasty goo on your keys. And let's not forget that these protective pieces have some thickness to them and can rub against the display when the lid is closed. This can lead to marks, scratches, and faded oleophobic coating. And if you're thinking about using those small stickers for individual keys, this is also not a very good idea. Those stickers are prone to accumulating dust and gunk on the edges. This gunk can later find its way inside the laptop, damaging the keyboard. And even if you clean the keyboard regularly, what if the sticky residue won't be possible to clean? Some producers don't pay enough attention to the behavior of their glue over time, so with all these keyboard protectors, you can get gunk, dust, sticky residue, damaged keyboard, or scratched screen. I'm not saying anything sensational here, but I had to say it. And now to more juicy stuff, the battery. That's where most people fail. One common mistake is letting the battery drain completely before recharging it. This can cause the battery's overall capacity to decrease over time and can lead to it not holding a charge as well. But not only that, it can also cause permanent damage to the chemical component pounds inside the battery. Another mistake is leaving the MacBook plugged in and charging for extended periods of time. Overcharging the battery can cause it to degrade faster and can even lead to overheating, which can cause serious damage to the internal components of the MacBook. However, it's not a bad thing to keep your MacBook connected to power for extra few hours after it being 100% charged, because it stops heating right after the battery is fully charged. So there is no need to <laughs> unplug the cable right after you've hit 100%. 100%. But don't do it too often because the battery should live through its natural cycles, going down and up again. Keeping the battery at one level for long periods of time is not a good idea. And exposing the battery to extreme temperatures, whether it's leaving the MacBook in a hot car or in direct sunlight or storing it in a cold place. This can cause the battery's performance to decline and can even lead to leakage or fire hazard. It's rare to happen, but still a possibility. And let's not forget about using non-Apple approved charging cables or adapters. That can also cause damage to the battery. I know it can be overwhelming, but don't worry. By being aware of these potential hazards and taking steps to avoid them, you can keep your MacBook's battery in good working condition. Just try being cautious in your usage and don't push the battery to its limits each time. Care is the key. We all know how crucial it can be to maintain the well-being of your MacBook. At the same time, it is also crucial to establish a solid web presence for your business. One way to achieve this is through the use of Squarespace, a website building platform that offers a variety of features to enhance your online presence. It's really straightforward to build your website here. You just select a category, a template, and start from there. You don't need to learn the basics of coding. Everything is intuitive and easy to understand. You just drag boxes 
bounces around, change sizes, fonts. Yeah, it's so easy. Even my grandma can do it. Squarespace's e-commerce capabilities make it easy to set up an online store and start selling products or services. It also provides analytics tools to monitor your website's performance and make data-driven decisions for your content and marketing strategies. As I said, the platform offers customizable templates to fit the needs of any personal blog, business website, or online store. Squarespace allows for personalization of colors, fonts, and layouts to give your website a unique and professional appearance. So start building your dream website today by signing up for a free trial on squarespace.com slash authorwiner and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code authorwiner. And now let's get back to it. So yeah, uncertified charging adapters. These adapters may be cheaper or more convenient than the official Apple adapters, but they can have a serious impact on the performance of your MacBook's battery. Uncertified adapters can provide too much or too little power, which can cause the battery to degrade more quickly or even damage it. It's always best to use official Apple adapters or adapters that have been certified by Apple to ensure that your MacBook is charging safely and efficiently. Here is one more connection-related mistake using cheap USB hubs. Not all hubs are made equal and cheap hubs usually aren't designed with safety in mind. Such hubs can either put unnecessary strain on your battery and MacBook itself or even alternate the currents your power adapter sends if the hub supports pass-through charging. It is always better to buy either a certified USB hub from Apple or from its partners. Recently, we've made a big video explaining everything there is to know about USB hubs, so check it out. One more subtle mistake, picking a configuration that won't cut it for your needs. MacBooks are expensive and it can be so tempting to pick a base version with less RAM, hoping that everything will be okay, and it will, but only for some time and only where you see it. MacBooks use such a thing as swap memory, when the SSD is used as additional memory. It is often seen in heavy applications like video editing, exporting photos or 3D rendering. This swap is a very helpful trick that MacBook uses to maximize its performance when needed. While this can be useful for some tasks, it can also cause damage to the SSD over time. This is because SSDs have a limited number of write cycles and using the swap feature constantly can cause the drive to wear out more quickly. It is generally recommended to pick a MacBook configuration with some headroom so that you won't be limited by the amount of unified memory later and won't have to damage your SSD. Typically, 16 gigs of unified memory and 512 SSD is enough and you should not get lower than that unless all you do is web and type. Another costly mistake is actually two mistakes at once and both have to do with opening your MacBook. The first mistake people make is opening the MacBook to clean off dust. If you are working on a bed or in a dusty environment, there's a high chance that your vents get clogged up fast, which can potentially lead to overheating. So with with these mistakes in place, it may seem like a good idea to disassemble the Mac to clean it. Opening a MacBook requires a certain level of technical expertise and specialized tools and even a small mistake can cause serious damage to the internal components. Additionally, dust and debris may cause damage to the internal components even when handled carefully. Even the smallest piece of debris can land on soldering and you risk damaging your laptop. If you want to keep your MacBook running smoothly, it's best to leave the cleaning and maintenance to the professionals. And I don't recommend an average person to make any modifications to the device, such as adding additional thermal pads. While these modifications may seem like a good idea to improve the cooling and performance of your MacBook, they can actually cause more harm than good. We have already made such a video in the past with the MacBook Air. All these modifications in the plane with thermals can potentially help with thermals if your Mac runs hot, and it's quite fun to be honest, if you're tech savvy, but actually damaging your Mac is far easier. So again, leave all the modifications to Apple engineers. How to clean a screen? How do you do it? With alcohol and a kitchen towel? You might think that using common household cleaners or paper towels is harmless, but let me tell you, it can cause serious damage to your device, from scratches on the screen to damage on the coating. It's important to know the right way to clean your MacBook's display. Instead of using household cleaning products or paper towels, use a microfiber cloth or a specialized screen cleaner specifically designed for MacBooks or laptops. Never 
spray cleaner directly onto the screen. Instead, spray it onto a cloth and then gently wipe the screen. Also avoid using excessive pressure when cleaning. It could actually scratch the surface of the screen or damage the coating. A gentle touch is all you need to get your display clean. Okay, what should you do? Should you stop using your MacBook altogether? <laughs> No, of course not. Just be careful where you can. Respect your laptop. It's a very complex piece of tech and it must be used with care. Engineers have designed these laptops for specific use cases. Stick to them. Keep yourself within technical and reasonable limits and you'll be fine. Your MacBook will be fine. Don't worry. Thank you for watching, guys, and see you in the next one.